there you go, the curtain comes down on this season in its entirety. We've lost here 2-1 to Manchester City um, in the cup final, man. And it is disappointing, it is disappointing, I think, to start off with how to dissect why we lost, I think it's quite simple. I think we made mistakes, mistakes cost us. I think when you concede after 13 seconds, um, yes, it was a great hit by Gundogan, but when you start matches in that vein against this team, um, you're asking for trouble. Um, I think it was Lindelof who probably should have gone and win, it, win his header, and he didn't. Um, so that was a mistake. Then you're one nil down, and then what cost us after that? I think David de Gea, he's got to he's got to save that, in my opinion. His kicking wasn't great today as well, so I feel like his performance wasn't wasn't helping us. Um, but effectively, the whole team as well, just the, just the, the huge pockets of lack of quality. And I think the things that we were missing were glaringly obvious of what we need to get into the team to go to the next stage. I mean, City actually, you know, were dominant, but they wasn't in third or fourth or fifth gear. I still felt they was in second gear, but the inferiority show, sh kept showing as the match went on. That's, that's how it went because of the type of players that we've got versus who they had. You know, there was obviously no Anthony, no Martial. That didn't help. And then obviously you're looking into midfield. Can Fred get about it? Can he impact the game and, and do the, the nasty bits of what we want to see? And, and it just didn't happen. It just didn't happen in midfield. Ericsson was getting bypassed. All of the things that we look at in our team, when we look at the goalkeeper, we look at we need the, the, the desperate need for a striker. Jane Sancho wasn't quite out. He was quite soft today, a little bit lethargic, not wanting to put into tackles. That intensity wasn't there from him. We had a couple of half chances. Rashi over there. Uh, Sky's a shot, which, you know, he had his, he had his shirt in his mouth because he probably knows he should do better than that. Um, the little goal mouth flurry towards the end as well was, was a tough one. We nearly nicked one there. But overall, we can't have any complaints. And I think the gulf between the two teams was there for us all to see. Um, and I just think when you, when, you, when you think about cup finals, you talk about how you start the game and you look at moments of what happened when you, when you look back. And like I said, to start the game in that manner was just absolutely devastating. And actually, I actually give us credit for, for stabilising after that. Obviously, we wasn't. You're never going to dominate play against City it, with us in this current form. You're never going to be able to keep them under sustained periods of pressure. But actually, it was quite even. It was quite even after that sort of 10 minute spell they had after the goal. We calmed ourselves down, um, and you know we got a fortunate penalty, which was a penalty. But I mean, we did well to work that op that that you know that opportunity to get the penalty, and it was a penalty. And at one one, you're going in at half time. You're thinking, right? Don't concede. Don't do anything silly and keep yourself in the game and try and make another moment. And we just couldn't do it. I mean, I, the second half, City on the attack. City, City are able to do that. It's like, out of the two teams today, if one plays towards their maximum and one plays in second gear, in that way, in that way around, in terms of City playing in second gear, Manchester United playing to their maximum, then there's going to be a game on. But with, if Manchester United are off it and not playing the best game that they could possibly play, City are going to be able to dispatch of us in second gear. And that's kind of what happened. So... Second half, I think City were just able to just keep composed, keep the ball happening, uh, going up, going. And, you know, when you get that, Fred gives away a couple of silly free kicks. De Bruyne crosses it. And uh, look, it has come through some players, but it's bounced twice and it hasn't got that much pace on it. And De Gea's got a good right hand to it. Not a strong right hand, which should be a strong right hand. Maybe the goalkeepers union out there will say maybe that's harsh, etc. But I don't know. I looked at that and thought he should have done better. And those are the small margins. Those are the small margins after that. Did we really do much? No, not not really. And you, you kind of feared the worst of the third coming and and potentially a fourth, which which didn't in the end. And we done well to hang on in there. But to be honest, it feels a bit numb because I'm like, I can see the, I can see the things wrong with the squad. We can see what we need. We need more legs and energy in midfield. We need more technical players in midfield. People who can keep the ball better up front. We had no bite today. You know, Sancho was very passive. Rashi up front was isolated a lot of the time. Bruno not his best position. So it was a makeshift. It really was. And that's, I think the team that's out there isn't the team that Ten Hag wants to see going forward. Obviously, he was some changes forced upon him. I think actually when Ganacho came on, which we, which we always anticipated, he was going to have an impact. I actually wonder in hindsight, maybe he should have started. I mean, I was saying loads of times, he, he can't start. You know, he's, he's the impact player off the bench, which actually he was. And he did. And he was a really good impact off the bench and had some decent moments. And he did a lot more than Sancho did in that short space of time. And what would the game have looked like if we did start him? Hindsight's a wonderful thing. That's, that's, that's how football goes. But we can't have too much complaints. And it's, it, it hurts. And look, City were probably going to go on to do the treble. And we always said if they do do it, it would be on our watch. And we have to, we have to hold that. We have to hold that. But like I said before the game, win or lose, 
this doesn't define us. This doesn't define, you know, the progress that we've made this season. We still have to remember that. And it's probably for another time to go into that. But right now, is in, in this immediate moment, we can't act like we haven't had a good season still. It just hurts now. You come to Wembley in a historic final, the first between the two teams uh, in, in an FA Cup final. And of course, we wanted to win. To see our rivals win it in front of us is going to hurt. And when they probably win against Inter Milan, that's going to hurt too. But it's about dusting down um, and it's about keeping calm and backing Eric Ten Hag, which with how the, how the, how the transfer window is going to go, we don't know. Think about, think about look, at, look at what's happening with the, with the situation of the club. Who's going to own it? What's the budget saying? When you look at the team today versus City squad, once we missed a couple as well, which even if Anthony and Martial would have started, obviously it wouldn't have made us favourites, but it would have made us stronger. It just, it, the quality just wasn't there. It really wasn't. It, Ganacho was the only person on the bench who could really come off the bench uh, and, and make an impact and change the game. You know, we didn't have somebody to bring on uh, in terms of midfield and changing it, getting on the ball, who's creative. We brought on, we brought on Scott McTominay. That's not really his game. You're bringing on Valt Weghorst. We know what that looks like. So there's, there's holes that need to be filled in this team. Essentially, that's because that's, the, that's the reason we lost. <laughs> you could see it. And actually, it, it, it shone a big light on all the things of, of what we need. We've got to get the striker in. We've got to get midfielders in. You know, um, Defensively, I actually thought we wasn't bad defensively. We wasn't. We wasn't that bad defensive. I think Grealish didn't really do much against Wan-Bissaka. Bernardo Silva yeah, kept the ball neat and tidy, but didn't really do anything to Luke Shaw. Harlem was relatively quiet until towards the end when obviously the game's a lot more open. Um, but like I said, you mentioned those players, De Bruyne gets the assist, Gundogan scores two great goals. They've, got, they've just got that conveyor belt, they're bringing on Foden, Mahrez didn't even touch the pitch. It's the same old story of what happens when everybody loses to City. They say just the quality that they've got um, in abundance versus most other teams. And, and we fell victim to that today. And, and we said for us to win today, we had to play perfect. Um, and we needed City to have one eye on, on the Champions League. And, and probably neither of those happened. We can't have any complaints. We lost to the better team. Um, I was pleased with the way that we managed to, to, to calm down after conceding so early. Because I'm not going to lie to you, after conceding after 13 seconds, I sat there and looked at Josh and I went, I'll tell you what, mate, this could be bad. This could be bad. I, and I'm sure you guys probably feared the worst. This could, this could be 5-0. You're thinking the absolute worst. So fair play to that. That was neat. That was, that was nice. But essentially, at 1-1, you, you never really felt we could go on and get that moment um, once the second half sort of started and you could see how City started that. If we were going to do it, we had to come out a lot stronger than that, be on the front foot, ask some more questions of Manchester City, um, which, which we wasn't able to do. So, listen, we've had a great season. Well, we've had a good season. We haven't had a great season. We've had a good season. We've made good progress. It's time to take some time out for the players, obviously the staff, and actually as fans, it's time to just have a little bit of woosah because I tell you what, we've nearly played almost every game this season. It's been really, really strenuous. And you know what? To come to days like this on the last day of the season, that's what we want. We want to be in for trophies at the end. Of course, it's about winning. It's not about getting there. It's about winning. But in the context of the season, if you would have said before where we were this time last year and said, you know what, next year you're going to finish third, you're going to get to two cup finals, you're going to win one, we would have taken that. And I know it sounds like trying to make yourself feel better and stuff, but you have to draw on the positives. This is gone now. And I'm, I'm still in it, feeling the pain of it. But it's gone. It's gone. And actually, there's probably a little bit more pain to come because City are going to win the treble. But you know what? It is what it is. They, they're going to win the treble. This is their moment. But we've got to bridge the gap. We've got to bridge the gap and we've got to get behind Eric Ten Hag um, and get him the signings that he needs. I think it would be glaringly obvious to Eric Ten Hag across this whole season exactly what he needs. He's a meticulous man. He's a meticulous manager. He will know exactly what he wants to go and get. We just have to back him. But I think you can see in the key areas, goalkeeper, you've, see, you've seen my thoughts on that. Long term, we, that's got to be looked at, that's got to be changed. The striker position, we've got to get two of them in. Anthony Martial wasn't even there today. Valt Vekos didn't even start. So we started without a recognised striker, although Rashid tried to fill in. Jaden Sancho continues to have these, these bumps and curves and, and sort of feelings of, you know, can he, can he do it? Um, and we have to play Bruno out on the right when his best position is behind the striker, you know? Ericsson, legs-wise, is, is not it. Couldn't really have anyone else on there who's going to do a better job. Um, Casemiro's 
got quality but needs help. So we know what we need. We know what we need. Um, and it's just about a matter of going out to get it uh, and making sure we can compete. Listen, I, but although it's a somber moment and it's, and it's sad we've lost, I just wanted to take the time to thank all of you guys for just being with us for the whole season. It's been so long, so drawn out, so many games, so many ups, so many downs. Um, and we appreciate that here at United View for you guys coming and, and supporting the channel and supporting us and, and obviously ultimately in, in our love for supporting Manchester United, the team. And we're going we're gonna to dust ourselves down. We're going to calm ourselves down and come back again next season. And actually, Eric Ten Hag's been a shining light at this football club. Think about, and this is to, 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 to finish on a positive, in, in a bad situation. Think about the beginning of the season, losing at home to Brighton, getting smashed at Brentford, then stabilising us, losing heavily against City, losing heavily against Liverpool. You know, the Ronaldo situation, the phasing out of other players, how he's dealt with the Harry Maguire situation of going in a different direction. Players like Lissandro Martinez, players like Casemiro. Look at Rashford's season this year. There are a lot of positives. Look at Wan-Bissaka's season this year. You know, there's a lot of positives to take from it. So we shouldn't feel too down. Yes, City are a bit un are an unstoppable force right now, but we've got to close that gap. That is the task, and we have Eric Ten Hag to help us do that. So don't feel down for too long. Have some days off. I'm going to have some days off social media. That's for sure. Um, the inquest will start. The media will be out. I think there's been a little bit about the takeover and so Jim Ratcliffe potentially being the preferred bidder. I don't know. I haven't seen much more um, about that. I saw it was a fake tweet, but who knows? But we're going to get more on the takeover. The media is going to be out to get us, but don't forget we have had a positive season and we've got a ruthless manager who I think will make the right decisions for this football club. So thank you guys for supporting us this year. We really appreciate it. We're going to dust ourselves down, take some time out. Obviously, we're going to be covering all the transfers and then obviously before we know it, tour is going to be upon us and we'll be out there in the States, guys. Disappointing end to the season, but overall, positive season. I'm out of here, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.